Shalom. Kol Laila Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai Bahashim Rakal Kadash. All praises be to the Most High Yahweh in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, and pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honors and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson entitled, The City Shall Not Be Spared. The city shall not be spared. So I'm looking at this trucker incident where the young trucker was sentenced to 110 years. Evil E is planning to help shut down the trucking industry, trying to create shortages, getting out to the major distribution centers. And that's what he's doing, using the media to set the conditions for animosity and rebellion amongst the trucking industry. That's why they keep publicizing this recent event. All of this is leading to famine and major food, water, and supply shortages in the grocery stores along with hyperinflation. So this video I'm getting ready to play is in Colorado, where the truckers are beginning to raise up and band together and not move in order to get critically needed supplies to these grocery stores. Let's continue. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm in my truck in Ohio, Toledo, Ohio. And I'm not moving this goddamn truck for justice for Roger. Just like the truck drivers out in Colorado that are not moving their truck. Well, guess what? I'm not moving mine neither. Justice all around the world for our fellow truck drivers. Roger sent it to 100 years. I stand with Roger. So things are heating up. You got the pandemic. You got hyperinflation that's beginning to stimulate. Okay, you got food shortages underway. More division and hatred in the country is on the rise. So, 2nd Ezra chapter 15 and chapter 16 is going to be played out here soon. <clears throat> Let's go into the word. The city shall not be spared. What is that city? We're going to start off in the book of Revelations, chapter 17. The book of Revelations, chapter 17, verse 17. For the Most High have put in their heart to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast, unto the words of the Most High shall be fulfilled. This is talking about the NATO countries under the European Union. They're going to launch their arrows, which are the nuclear missiles, onto America. Let's go to verse 18. Who is that great city? Revelation 17, verse 18. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Lady Liberty, the daughter of Babylon. That's the city that's in the judgment seat right now. Let's go to Amos chapter 9, 
Verse 9. <clears throat> Behold, the eyes of the Lord God are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith the Lord. Let's go to verse 7. Nope. I'm going to go to verse 9. For lo, I will command, and I will sift the house of Israel from among all nations, like as corn is sifted in a sieve, yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. So that sinful kingdom, or that great city, is America, with all the nations wandering after it, following after her ways, her paganism her abominations and witchcraft, feminism, Edomite supremacy, so forth and so on. So that sinful kingdom is describing the daughter of Babylon and the cohort of nations following her. Let's keep going. I'm going to go from there to the book of Isaiah chapter 3, verse 1. The Most High will remove the leaders. The book of Isaiah, chapter 3, verse 1. For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, doth take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff, the whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water. That is the famine that's being ushered in upon the sinful kingdom. Food and water shortages, which is going to be preceded by hyperinflation. What is hyperinflation? These prices are going to, they're going to double and triple eventually. <laughs> Followed by shortages altogether. So the dollar or the currency is going to be significantly devalued. They keep printing money, but money is worthless if it lacks spending power. So the cost of goods and services is going to double and eventually triple. Isaiah... <clears throat> Excuse me, the book of Isaiah, chapter 3, verse 1. For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, doth take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff, the whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water, the mighty man and the man of war, the judge and the prophet and the prudent and the ancient. So once again, that great city, that sinful kingdom, is describing America. I'm going to read it one more time. Amos 9, verse 8. Behold, the eyes of the Lord God are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving that I will not utterly Destroy the house of Jacob, saith the Lord. So a one-third elect are going to be preserved. Two-thirds of the Israelites are going to be destroyed on this side, here in the daughter of Babylon, along with the other nations. So they're going to die the death of the uncircumcised, the death of the heathen. Whenever heathen comes to mind, Always think two-third Israelites first, followed by Edom, followed by the other nations. <clears throat> Let's keep going. Let's go here. Psalms chapter 105, verse 14. So keep in mind a remnant of Israel is going to be showed mercy. Elect. Psalms 
105, verse 14. He suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sakes, saying, Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Moreover, he called for a famine upon the land. He break the whole staff of bread. So all these events that we're seeing play out on the earth, the events that are unfolding, is all geared towards freeing the elect of Israel, punishing the inhabitants of the land, that great city, the leadership, that mighty city is being broken down. And that's what's happening. So it is a gradual process. We're seeing a gradual decline in the strength and rulership of Babylon. So he's reproving kings for our sake. Reprove means to punish or bring correction. Sharp rebuke. Let's read it again. Just like he did this for Joseph in ancient Egypt. And Joseph became exalted. So the Most High is exalted through preserving his witnesses, a, rem a remnant or elect. Psalms 105, verse 15, again, saying, Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Moreover, he called for a famine upon the land. He break the whole staff of bread. He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant. Was not the Israelites sold to modern Egypt or the modern daughter of Babylon as servants, slaves? See? So whatsoever was written aforetime was written for our learning. Let's go ahead and get that. Romans 15 and 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. So this is why we study the whole Bible, Old and New Testament. We have comfort and hope through the scriptures. Psalms 105 or 17. He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron. Was not that prophesied to happen to the Israelites in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28? Or let's get it. Deuteronomy 28, somewhere around verse 46. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 28, let's go to verse 48. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. See, so the things that happened to Joseph that happened to our forefathers in the ancient world is also a foreshadowing of things to come in the future. Why? Because everything 
repeats itself. Why? Because our spirits are reincarnated, regenerated back onto the earth. Psalms 105, verse 16. Moreover, he called for a famine upon the land. He broke a whole staff of bread. He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron until the time that his word came. The word of the Lord tried him. So the conditions are being set for Jacob's trouble, tribulation. This is the Most High's movie. He controls the evil and the good. All belongs to the director, the great movie producer, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. So he's going to have mercy on Jacob, elect, and yet choose Israel. Where do we get that from? Isaiah chapter 14. He always preserves a remnant to tell the story. What story? Great affliction, persecution, and being redeemed. Let's keep going. The city will not be spared. That great city, the golden city, the daughter of Babylon. Ezekiel 14, verse 12. The word of the Lord came again to me, saying, Son of man, when the land sinneth against me by trespassing grievously, then will I stretch out my hand upon it and will break the staff of bread thereof and will send famine upon it and will cut off man and beast from it. <clears throat> Are we not seeing the conditions being set for famine? Have we forgotten about the sea ships sitting off the major ports of the United States? All these goods are sitting in the water off the major coasts, the seaports of America, the dawn of Babylon. So we're seeing these events play out again. This is why we study history and Bible prophecy. Let's read it again. Ezekiel 14. Verse 13, son of man, when the son of man, when the land sinneth against me by trespassing grievously, then will I stretch out my hand upon it and will break the staff of bread thereof and will send famine upon it and will cut off man and beast from it. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it, they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Lord, power. So a remnant is going to be saved based on being cleansed by the word of truth and preordained in the lot of the elect, a small sanctuary of the Lord. Verse 15, if I cause noisome beasts to pass through the land and they spoil it so that it be desolate that no man may pass through because of the beasts, though these three men were in it as I live, saith the Lord power, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters, they only shall be delivered but the land shall be desolate. So those that are approved by the Most High, it's talking about that small, noble class of people, his prophets, 
apostles, elders, and teachers, and a remnant of men, women, and children. So salvation starts with what? Yahweh Shai, followed by the men of the house of David, followed by a remnant of elect, men, women, and children. Let's go to verse 17. Or if I bring a sword upon that land and say, and say, sword, go through the land so that I cut off man and beast from it, though these three men were in it as I live, saith the Lord power, they shall, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters, but they only shall be delivered themselves. Or if I send a pestilence into their land and pour out my fury upon it in blood to cut off from it man and beast. So the land is being prepared for bloodshed because it was built on bloodshed. So the great city is in the crosshairs of the seat of judgment being executed upon it. So the Most High is stirring up the pot and brewing up the mixture to bring a pour out his wrath of fury. A sword is being furbished. Or if I send pestilence into that land and pour out my fury upon it in blood to cut off from it man and beast. Though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, saith the Lord, power, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter. They sh shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. For thus saith the Lord, power, how much more when I send my four sore judgments upon Jerusalem, the sword and the famine and the noisome beasts, and the pestilence to cut off from it man and beast. So judgment starts with the house of Israel. And this judgment, the eyes of the Lord, is upon the great city, the great kingdom of the daughter of Babylon. Verse 22, For behold, therein shall be left a remnant that shall be brought forth, both sons and daughters. Behold, they shall come forth unto you, and ye shall see their way and their doings, and ye shall be comforted concerning the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem, even concerning all that I have brought upon it. So despite this word going out, around the clock every day, Israelites ignore the word. They don't believe Bible prophecy. And they take this truth for granted. And when you read about Noah, uh, let's go back up to that. Noah, Daniel, and Job. Guess what? They're back. They're teaching right now. Every day. So these prophets are here in their life. And I'm going to show that. I'm going to show with uh, Daniel. Ezekiel 14 and 14. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it, they should deliver but their own soul by their righteousness, saith the Lord, power. So the Most High has preordained apostles prophets to be delivered and the remnant of the men, women, and children that are following them. Let's read verse 22 again. And then we're going to show you that Daniel is back. And we know that Job and Noah is back through the spirit. Ezekiel 14, verse 22. Yet behold, therein shall be left a remnant that shall be brought forth, 
both sons and daughters, behold, they shall come forth unto you, and ye shall see their way and their doings, and ye shall be comforted concerning the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem, even concerning all that I have brought upon it. So we get comforted through the word of prophecy. Let's go to Daniel 12. Everybody is back in their lot. Daniel 12, verse 12. Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days, being tested through the trial of tribulation, a test of time. Let's go to verse 13. But go thou thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. Daniel is standing in his lot. The prophets are standing back in their lots. Let's read it again. So we are serving during a time and a dividing of times, a set, a set prescribed number of days before the judgment of Babylon and the year of recompense and the deliverance and salvation of the remnant of the hopeful elect. Daniel, the book of Daniel. One moment, I need water. The book of Daniel, chapter 12, verse 13. But go thou thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. Reincarnation is real. We just read it. So that remnant starts with the prophets. Think, uh, oh, let's get one more. So this, this city of Babylon is not going to be spared. Let's go to Jeremiah 50 and 14. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 50, verse 14. Put yourselves in array against Bab Babylon. Verse 14. <clears throat> Put yourselves in array against Babylon round about. All ye that bend the bow, shoot at her, spare no arrows, for she has sinned against the Lord. The daughter of Babylon is not going to be spared, neither shown any mercy. Let's read it again. Jeremiah 50, and those arrows are intercontinental ballistic missiles. Jeremiah 50, verse 14. Put yourselves in array against Babylon round about. All ye that bend the bow, shoot at her, spare no arrows, for she have sinned against the Lord. Let's go to verse 13. Because of the wrath of the Lord, it shall not be inhabited, but it shall be wholly desolate. Everyone that goeth by Babylon shall be astonished and hiss at all the plagues and hiss at all her plagues. Fire. They're going to see this place engulfed Surrounded by fire. I'm going to get one more. Why does the Most High leave a remnant? Jeremiah 50 and 43. 
Let's go to verse 42. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 50, verse 42. They shall hold the bow and the lance. They are cruel and will not show mercy. Their voice shall roar like the sea, and they shall ride upon horses, every one put in array like a man to the battle against thee, O daughter of Babylon. So we're going to see armored personnel vessels, armored troops approaching, helicopters. When you listen to the sound of the blade, it sounds like the seas roaring. And when missiles are approaching the impact area. So these are troops coming on an air assault and an amphibious assault to come upon the land, attacking it, and not necessarily land on the land, but surround it like these submarines that can shoot nuclear missiles. And aircraft can shoot nuclear missiles. So they're going to be firing upon the land. They shall hold the bow and the lance. They are cruel and will not show mercy. Their voice shall roar like the sea. And they shall ride upon horses, every one put in array, like a man to the battle against thee. O daughter of Babylon, the king of Babylon hath heard the report of them, and his hands waxed feeble. Anguish took hold of him, and pangs as a woman in travail. Let's get down. I want to get to verse 45. A remnant. Witnesses are going to be preserved. Jeremiah 50 Verse 45, therefore, hear ye the counsel of the Lord that he hath taken against Babylon and his purposes, that he hath purposed against the land of the Chaldeans. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitation desolate with them. That's talking about Amalek that's occupying Israel. That's another part that I wanted to get. Okay, I'm not going to make this as, this long. I'm going to go ahead and end it here. So the remnant are left as witnesses to the destruction of Babylon. <laughs> and there was another part that I wanted to add in there or read, not add, but read it about that remnant. Nope, that's okay. I think the point has been made. So that's what the remnant is going to be or serve as witnesses to the judgment of the Lord and that show forth his glory, praise, and mercy. Hopefully this has been an edifying lesson. All praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, or Kakadash, or Rakatham. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Palm Yasharala, and Abad Babao. We got next, Lord willing. Shalom.